Well, I guess it's more time to talk about reverse racism. <laughs> <sighs> it just makes me tired. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I you know, at yeah. work I've got people who I don't know well enough to know where they're coming from. So if they say certain things, you know, as soon as I hear something objectionable, I'm going to do a sort of calculus. Like, okay, if I say something, will they raise a fuss? And will there be trouble? If I say something, will they nod and go, oh, I'm sorry, you're right. If I don't say something, will they keep doing it forever thinking that I approve? Uh, yeah. You know, uh, uh, you know what, what kind of response is called for here that will cause the least pain down the line? Because um, silence is the one they want. Uh, right. And... If you're silent 99 times and speak up the hundredth, they get really defensive. Like, you didn't say anything. How would I know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But if... if yeah, it's... it's yeah, if they, I mean, if they're only going to make that statement once and never again, then it's not worth the effort to engage on the subject. Uh, you know, unless I happen to have the, ex uh, the, the energy that particular day and I'm feeling ornery about it, uh, but usually it's not worth the effort. Um... I'm, I'm in a position of uh, a little bit of authority at my other job, and, and I, I have the ability to say, yeah, I don't want to hear that again, and just leave it at that, and that's nice. <laughs> they can right, think I'm being right. a butthead, but I'm being the butthead who gets to tell them not to say that around me. Yeah, I know I'm not yeah. changing their mind, I know I'm not changing the world, but at least in this little bubble of the world where I am in earshot. They're, they're going to know not to say it. At least, at the very least, they know there's one human being on the planet who doesn't approve or agree. So they have more information in the world, so that's not nothing. Um, but I, I, <laughs> I was going through once, and, and uh, uh, one of the actors was telling a Holocaust joke. I was like, my God, no. Never say that again. <laughs> and then, like, later on, out in the parking lot, she was telling the story of getting called out to her friend, which required telling the same Holocaust joke in earshot just as I was walking by. <laughs> and she said, I mean, it was like a, like a, a kid getting caught. She, she kind of looked up and saw me see her and got that stricken look on her face, and I knew I didn't have to say anything. She wasn't going to mess up. She was going to, at the very least, get off property before telling any more Holocaust jokes, and so that's three acres of safety. That's, that's, that's an improvement. Yeah, I have. Uh, I I find I mean I mean, this is this is something that I struggle with all the time because I feel so. Uh, you know, because like I'm not in a position of authority or something, and also like I I know this seems uh, kind of uh, uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know, not uh, not hypocritical, but just kind of like catch twenty two, I guess. You know, I feel like because I'm a cis hetero white guy, like what the hell does it mean coming from me? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I I feel like uh, I'm being a jackass, like speaking for other people. But if I call things out, then it's like, do I just look like some jackass white guy trying to, you know, uh, stand up for things even though he knows nothing of this culture? Um, but on the other hand. Silence seems bad too, so it just si uh, silence looks like consent. Silence looks like yeah, you're with them on this particular thing. Um, right, right. What what happens is, and 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 I think thinking about that is actually useful. Um, and and the way I like to think about it is, um, you can um, amplify the voices of the people you're discussing rather than speaking over them it's a subtle distinction but but if you think of it that way it, it can help um, but a lot of these people will listen to the white cis head guy uh, and not listen to us you know <laughs> yeah I've, I've I've found that that's definitely true on uh, on Facebook whenever I uh, stand up for women uh -huh. <laughs> yeah that's you know yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I've definitely seen that happen yeah um, Hi, I'm going to say the exact same thing this woman just said two seconds ago, and you'll respond to me and not her. Right, right, exactly, yeah. And it's it's kind of 
frustrating, but I'm like, well, I guess at least maybe they heard the point, you know? Yeah. They're, you know, you're not going to change anyone's mind, but you can add to a collection yeah. of anecdotes that there are people out there that disagree with them. And eventually that will possibly reach a threshold where they'll actually look at themselves and go, oh, yeah. Because there's evidence that people do eventually change their minds, but they more or less have to do it themselves. Sure. Or, uh, I yeah, mean, I mean, it, it's 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 hard, right? I mean, like I, uh, uh, you know, I I I was at a different place many years ago than I am today, and like I'm not saying that like I'm the most enlightened person or anything, but I'm just saying like I understand a lot of these issues a lot better. Um, uh, and whenever someone would try to teach me, uh, I mean, I'm pretty stubborn in general, but whenever someone, oh my god, that's not <laughs> Whenever someone would try to teach me, there's this immediate kind of defensiveness that comes up. Yeah. And uh, I think getting over that, you know, getting over the fear of being called racist or whatever, I think that's kind of a big first step. Uh, but yeah, I... I <laughs> I think you have to be, uh, I'll never get tired of him blowing himself up, uh, I, I mean, I think that's something that you have to be, I, you, you, you've got to kind of let, let your, uh, uh, pride go a little yeah. bit to, to learn these things. Uh, and it, and it does happen when, when you're a member of, uh, one marginalized group, but, but not another, um, so, uh, Dan Savage who for a while was the voice of gay in America, um, is an asshole. And, uh, yeah. and a lot of us don't like him. Uh, he's, he's misogynist, he's transphobic, um, but boy doesn't he get defensive, because he's, he's got to get out of jail free card, because he's gay. Yeah. You know, and, and that, that's the thing that happens in a lot of groups. That's why, uh, um, uh, Jesus, I can't even remember the name, the word. But the different kinds of bigotry kind of overlap and combine. Um, uh, transitional. Is a word for that? I think. Trans no, not transitional. That's wrong. Transsectional. Transsectional? Inter intersectional. Intersectional. Inter yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, that's why it's important because, you know, different, <laughs> different groups, different communities, and different in individuals are not free from bias just because they're subject to one axis of bias. Um, sure. But we get super defensive. You know, the, the, the racist gay people and the, the, uh, particularly the, the sexist gay people get super defensive. Right, um, right. And instead of just even looking at the question. You know, people who ask whether RuPaul's Drag Race is a bit misogynist or, or transphobic, um... They don't get a good conversation on the subject because the, the the fan base gets so defensive they completely derail the question. I ha I have no answer to that question, but you know it's worth discussing, isn't it? It's not going to do any harm to discuss. <laughs> sure. I mean, I don't I don't know. Is that, is that a show? I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> You're unfamiliar with the show. <laughs> Yeah, it's a reality show kind of palette pageant style for uh, drag queens. Okay. And and the loud. the the Good God, York, that's so loud. Critique, uh, in part, is that most of these drag queens are cisgender white men in drag. Okay. Or or cis gay white men in drag, uh, and their portrayal of femininity is a caricature of, of, of womankind, and, and, yeah, kind of, if it were done in a, in a comic book, we'd go, that's pretty damn sexist, you know? Um, yeah. and then there are a few of them who do what's called peanut butter, which is where a white, a white drag queen puts on, essentially, blackface, or, or brown face, um, to, to create a character, and that's something they get, you know, get shit for, and then... Um, since they're mostly not transgender, um, and a lot of what they do is, is kind of a, a, a joke on, on transgenderism, too. Um, they use some, some anti-transgender slurs and stuff, and it's just like, just us girls, eh. 
we can say this stuff because we're we're not normal, so you know we can't be bigoted. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. They. I guess they've made some changes over the years, but it's still it was kind of frustrating when when they were they were getting call outs and they were not engaging the actual question. They were engaging this this weird straw man that said, "I hate drag queens." You know. Mm, yeah. Oh look, the hand door. Mm -hmm. Oh good. Oh, sorry, I'm back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're not hitting him. <laughs> Get a clue. There you, go. Mm -hmm. you know, you got mm -hmm. infinite ammo. What the hell, right? What told him? <laughs> Something. That's the. Uh... Oh god. You know. You know what I hate. Unrelated to much of anything is. I, I was about to say this thing, and then I, I remembered how much I hate it. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So, I mean, that's what he was doing, but that's not the definition of insanity. It's, 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 yeah, I've never, I've never understood that because I'm like, that's, <coughs> that's really how you prove things via the scientific method. You know, not necessarily expecting a different result, but looking. Okay. You know? And, you know, um, it's common human behavior, and it does not require an illness. Um, yeah. Insanity, by the way, and we're talking technically and pedantically, which, you know, is what I prefer. Uh, <laughs> insanity is not a medical term. It is a legal term. Insanity is not being cognizant of the uh, consequences of your actions uh, in a legal sense. So, yeah, uh, you can be insane but not have a mental illness, and vice versa. All right. Like, like the, um, the gay panic defense was, was essentially an insanity plea. He was so upset at discovering that this person was gay, he had to murder him. He didn't know what he was doing. Right. Yeah. Still a legal defense in some places. Sure. It's, uh... uh... You know, I just, I just, more and more, I, it's, and I mean, especially since, like, Trump's win, and I, I get, like, uh, that a lot of, uh, minorities, people of color, they, you know, everybody from marginalized groups, like, find it kind of cute that, uh, Raincoat Killer, oh, the card, I was like, we found that. <laughs> uh, Game's over. The, uh, uh, find it, like, kind of cute and, you know, silly that uh, people like me are just now picking up on this but it's just like this this fucking white fragility that's out there mm -hmm. like especially white male fragility mm -hmm. it's just it's so like like I'm like guys but seriously like are, are, are we none of us adults you know I mean like like uh, like I get that sort of immediate defensiveness but overall like fucking grow up you know did, did you see the the um the anti-Semitic moment, uh, where he was, he was mad at the reporters because they were asking difficult questions, and he asked for an easy question, which is... Yes, 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 yes. yes. And the guy says, what are we going to do about anti-Semitism? And he took it as a personal attack, because everything's yeah. about him, and said, I'm the least racist, least anti-Semitic person you know, and I'm, you know, right. I'm upset at you for asking this question. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah. Sorry, I just got upset because York uh, passed that over. Oh. Yeah, no, it's it's like uh, uh, right as as Trevor Noah rightfully pointed out, it's like somebody asks, if "You're the president." Somebody asks you, "What are we going to do?" <laughs> Never gets old. What are you? What are we going to do about the rise in anti-Semitism? You say we're going to stamp it out. I mean, it's like done. Yeah, that you know, is an easy simple, question. Yeah, um, and instead, it's it's uh, it's this like. You no, know, somebody's somebody's attacking. Like you know, it's like the reporter didn't say because of your presidency, which you could say. And he bent over um, backwards to not say that too. He yeah, he knew what yeah. game he had to play to get that question in, and it's, it still wasn't enough. Right, right, and uh, it just it 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 and uh, I I mean, it's like you know, like I I personally. I I believe Trump isn't racist. He's just willing to work with racists to win, you know? Um, he's he's willing to say, like, these guys don't have a voice if I give them a voice, and if I don't say that they're bad people, then they're going to vote for me because 
you know, everybody is willing to throw them under the bus because they're horrible. Uh, if I don't do that, if I even just give them that not denying them, then I've got their vote. But I don't think he's, you know, you know I mean, he's just happy to use racism for his own ends. I don't think he himself really gives a shit. I, you know? I would argue that being willing to use racism for your own ends is a racist standpoint. <laughs> sure, fair enough. But, but, uh, but I, I... You know, and and maybe we're splitting a uh, splitting hairs a little too fine here, but I don't believe that I, I don't believe that he has any views about people of color and their abilities. You know, it's, I, I it's do. All of, um, do, do you, okay, well, from what I've seen, let's put sure. it that way too. Uh, before I, he was a presidential candidate, um, he was. I mean, he, he's been almost all his life um, the, the center of a number of legal cases. Um, a bunch of them in New York were uh, from uh, black people who were being evicted from his properties. Now, now I, I have read about that, but unless there were more than I've seen, those cases were all from the late 70s and early 80s. And uh, it, it seemed as if, and, and maybe they only changed because they kept getting in trouble for it, but it seemed as if that had changed. Um. It's possible, but, I mean, that, that is something from his past. And another thing from his past is his insistence that no one is more raci uh, less racist than me, which is always a red flag, no matter who says it. <laughs> Tr fair enough, yeah. yeah. Um, fair enough. It's funny, uh, uh, one of his supporters posted a, a picture, and uh, if, if I were really good at this, I would remember their names. But, like, three of his, his um, cabinet members, and there's, like, a black guy, a gay guy, and a woman. And they said, you know, people say he's... Uh, you know, he's bigoted. Look, he's got a, a, a black guy, a gay guy, a woman, except um, the woman was horribly anti-gay. No, the black guy was horribly anti-gay. The gay guy was horribly <laughs> sexist. And the woman was horribly anti-black. They're like this this kind of self-balancing tripod here. Um, and that, that just seems to be the way he works. That's kind of like, I think it was, I think it was Whoopi Goldberg who pointed out, like, uh, Bill Clinton, I guess, I don't know if it's still the case, but at least 20 years ago when this was relevant, um, uh, his, his best friend is black, I guess, and she's like, you never see him talk about that, because it just, it doesn't matter, right. you know? And so, uh, uh, I thought that we, she was, you know, she was saying, like, if George W. Bush's best friend were black, he would be on his, uh, shoulder like a parrot all the damn time. <laughs> yes. Hello? Is this an actual quest, or are they just like the little like lunchtime music here? Oh, he skipped the conversation. That's part of what it's for, is because it's usually funny conversation. <sighs> well, no, the the as of the last time, the conversation was muted. We didn't even get to hear it. So I think I think we've surpassed the point in the having it every day where there's actual conversation. Now it's just muted talking while they eat, and so that's why I'm like, why even bother doing it if it doesn't. <sighs> Just buy some crackers for fuck's sake. <laughs> um, I, I think um, lunch has more staying power. Uh, um, but I don't know if it's really worth it since he can afford plenty of crackers. My rod of legends has plenty of staying power. Good for you. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not a smoker. This game would drive me nuts. Every time those cigarettes go scrolling by. Because just now a cola went by and it's like, man, I could use a Coke. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Actually drinking coffee at the moment, too. It's cold. Might as well be a Coke. This is... Love your coffee for this. I've, I've, I've foregone the flavored water. I've got the diet, too, right now. Uh, but yeah, so... Wow. I feel like, uh... I feel, <laughs> I'm like that. One of these episodes of of uh, uh, Deadly Premonition could be nothing but plot, and we're still just going to be over here talking about uh, politics and social justice. How about filmmaking? But, uh, I mean, that's that, that's more <laughs> pertinent uh, and more um, at work. We call that evergreen. So, like our topical stuff. You know, if someone watches this ten years later, well, well, that was before the apocalypse. 
<laughs> right, right. Movie, ma- movie um, making is more evergreen. You know, I, uh... Oh my god, like, fucking... <laughs> Did you see Passengers? <laughs> Whoa. Wow. That was weird. Uh, that's that's what comes to mind when I thought, think about filmmaking. Saw so, uh, Passengers uh, with uh, someone thinking, like, from the previews, thinking that it would be, like, a good date movie. Oh, and, no. Uh, wow. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a good date movie if you're just not paying attention. <laughs> Zach, Emily it's this for people to come between 1500 and 1700. We can't do it. Oh my god, we actually right went now. to the town hall? Mm-hmm. Let's come back at the right time. Don't come back. Smoke. Whoa, what was That's that? Probably what we'll do. Uh, I think we're, we just happen to be like facing the sun or something. Mm. Okay, here we go. He's like, now it's been like four days. I like how the deer head behind like, him moves sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Your head's like rocking. Cola and coffee? You're gonna have to pee and poop. I mean, that's good, right? I mean, yeah, I suppose it's good. You should yeah. have to do that. In general, but a lot of that stuff tends to hurry the. Oh, it's his um, Nimbus. Oh, he's got. Uh, apparently, in Super Great Friends uh, playthrough, all those parked cars, you can get a lot of them and park them in front of the entrance. So, so when it's time for the meeting, no one is there because they can't get in. <laughs> they start getting out of their car and yelling. Now maybe we're just gonna check out everybody's car. Well, you know, there's some flavor text that, um... Oh, that's the, uh, the chef from the diner. Whose name escapes me? Uh, it's suspect. Oh, it's right. Like George Suspect. Do, 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 do.